thanks, Bruno. Um, what happens when we put on a virtual reality headset? What happens in our brains when we're immersed into virtual reality? Virtual reality seems, if we look around, it seems to be all over the place. It has arrived in the workplace, business meetings. It's important for social media, social interaction, and of course for gaming, a major driving force in gamer, gaming and the metaverse. There is not just VR, we have AR, MR, XR. Uh, don't worry, I won't go through all the definitions, but VR being on the virtual side, everything is controlled, everything is digital, whereas AR adds, augmented reality will add digital objects to the real world, and m MR being something in between, and XR being really sort of an overview uh, term for all these technologies. But has XR or robotics, have they arrived in medicine? So we've talked or we've seen on one of the slides before that for training it is important. Surgeons in particular have used XR and robotics technology to develop something called minimally invasive surgery. So minimally invasive surgery allows to minimize incisions and instead of large scars, also minimize other major post-operative complications. But going back to what I'm interested in, what happens when you put a head-mounted uh, display or a virtual reality headset on, on uh, when you're wearing it? Well, the surgeon that you see on the, on the, on the bottom right, the, the person in the, in the green shirt, well, he's not really having his hands in the patient's body. He's really two meters away, and the patient is somewhere over on the right side, and robotic tools are carrying out the minimal invasive surgery. What creates this connection between the hands of the surgeon, and how does it feel actually to be basically just mo uh, manipulating objects inside the patient's body? And I think we need, or oh it may be helpful, um, obviously I think it, it will be helpful, I'm a neuroscientist, let's look at the brain and how are the hands of the surgeon represented under normal conditions? Take your own hand, for example, your own left hand, you can look at it, and that goes to the, to the red spot in the back of the brain, that's a visual hand. I can close my eyes, and I still feel it, that's proprioception or position sense. I can touch it, it's a third hand representation, and I can make some sound, and so your, your brain is having four different left hand representations. A very important area or areas actually processing these informations are actually outside these four regions, and those are the regions that I'm going to argue are key for XR, are also key where the surgeon can operate and manipulate those tools at a distance inside um, the patient's uh, body. We can study these mechanisms um, in the research lab, studying, for example, the, um, the so-called rubber hand illusion, and what is done here, so the experimenter in the green shirt and the, um, the, the, the subject in the blue shirt, and the video will, will come a few more times. Uh, um, no worries, Th there's ethics you get very easily for these kind of experiments. So there is a hidden hand. This is the proprioceptive hand I was referring to before. And there's a touch cue applied to this hand. And then there's this ridiculously looking rubber hand in front of him. Now, of course, normally when I feel touched, this is happening right where my real hand really is. But the simple experiment shows if I put the hand away and put another cue a visual hand, not even looking like a hand, at the corresponding position, and there's a touch cue applied visually on the fake hand, the rubber hand, and at the same time in the hidden hand, the brain starts believing that that's actually my hand. Could this come with benefits for pain, for chronic pain, for example? If my hand is painful and I create a virtual hand representation, can that overwrite painful hand representations? And that's exactly what we're able to find in a number of studies, and what you can see here in this, in this video is that we didn't use a touch cue to represent the own body representation, but we illuminated the hand, as you can see here, with the heartbeats, each heartbeat that we measured online from each of these patients, and we illuminated the hand in synchronous fashion. So there's another somatic hand representation, which we, which we decrease by showing a cardiacly enhanced uh, virtual hand, because that's again something you can do in virtual reality. You can create entirely new links that, that people have not been exposed to. So the nice findings in that study were that the pain was immediately decreased in a chronic pain patient, and also that the force, so the usage of that hand, which is decreased in pain conditions, um, also increased. So two other examples here, three um, um, other messages. First of all, I mentioned it already, can be personalized. It can also be combined with many, other, uh, with many other therapies, like pharmacology, for example. In the middle, a COVID study on breathing comfort that we 
carried out. Again, the virtual reality technology we developed can be done in the clinic, can be done at the doctor's office, but can also be done at home, which is very important, where we want patients uh, to carry out uh, uh, many of these um, continuous uh, therapies. I want to move on to my last topic, which is that what really I'm passionate about, these applications are very important, but it's XR is a basic research technology. Neuroscience needs XR in order to study consciousness and how the body is represented um, in the brain. So we've taken the rubber hand illusion. Remember, this was the hidden hand where the touch cue was applied at the same time then with the virtual uh, hand. What we've done here is that we link a touch cue again that cannot be seen on the back of our subjects. And then while the subjects were feeling a touch in the back, they were seeing an avatar in front two meter distance, and now something very similar happens. Before the brain had to weigh, where am I? At the hidden hand or the visual hand? And here, something similar has to happen. Am I standing here where I perceive the touch cue or standing over there two meters in, in front? And you will not be surprised. Using this, this setup, we were able to also manipulate where people experience. We can entirely take them out of their bodies and s embody avatars that, that can be seen. Again, this comes with analgesic effects, but what was really interesting is from a point of view, what is the topic today? What is needed to really immerse people into virtual reality? Imagine you could, or your brain could generate the feeling that you really are in virtual reality and not in real reality anymore. This leads to something called out-of-body experiences, which have been reported from time immemorial, but virtual reality and these kind of multi-sensory stimulations I presented to you can be used in order to engineer such sensations. Um, and sort of the next conference uh, that we have. I mean, we're all very happy to be back in real reality and meet here at CERN. But in the future, of course, if these many Zoom calls, these too many Zoom calls that we had, if you could meet in a virtual immersive environment and really feel there, I think potential um, for this is really large. Again, this slide to remind myself also, we're doing a lot of neuroscience, so we have to adapt all these virtual reality technologies, not just to the patient and to uh, behavioral studies, but also to MRI scanners, like we've heard in the, in the previous example. So this is a very noisy, very tiny environment, so, so VR has to be adapted to this environment. We're also working with drones and aviation um, 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 uh, robotics in order to enhance still these changes uh, of flight simulation, but also um, disembodiment. And then the two slides at the bottom, or the two images at the bottom, really to remind me that for 5,000 years, humans have been fascinated. Different forms of avatars you can see on, 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 on that slide, how we can project and what is projected in terms of, of, of the soul and other representations of the, of the self. Here are my three uh, take home messages. Um, the body is key is really the main message, but in technology terms, the body is key. If we want to achieve strong immersion into virtual environments, we need to control bodily stimuli and we need to systematically map them into immersive virtual world. The, the scientific conclusion is, well, the good news are that we don't need to completely reverse engineer the body. We don't need each of the 10 fingers and the 10 toes. We can take certain parts particularly the trunk, but also hand representations. And we don't need to look at all these four regions. We need to manipulate and control those regions of multisensory integration. And then, of course, the last part, which is the topic um, of, of health and medicine, but also well-being, that controlling via X XR the body representation in the brain, this is an amazing avenue to bring therapies right here in the West in the US, but also, I think, across the globe. Uh, where many people will have smartphones and similar devices where uh, entirely new forms of, of virtual reality can be developed. Thank you.